Yo, 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 welcome to another episode of the Goodman Factory. I have to be honest, this is the third time I've had to do this. <laughs> but listen, I'm going to introduce myself as the host, Manny. I've got my boy here, Mike, and I've got Ade. We've also got Goodman Malik there on the visuals doing his thing. Before we start, just want to make sure you guys uh, use our discount code, which is GPOD1. So if you go onto the Goodman Factory website, use GPOD1 uh, to, to have access to all our discount codes for all of our products. So... Today's session, we're going to be discussing growing up in the internet era, what it was like for us as a 90s babies and some of the websites and, 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 and things that we were using at the time, i.e. MSN, showing our age, <laughs> Bebo, MySpace, High Five. So I'm going to start off with you, Mike, go back okay. into history, big, big throwback. So what was, it, what was it like growing up in the internet era for you? Interesting. I'd say very interesting. I uh, I was um part of the uh MSN to start off with MSN era and it led on to like the MySpace and the Bebo. Even though I didn't have a MySpace myself, I did um I knew friends that had MySpace and all the rest of it. I think I just made a page, but I didn't mm. do anything on it. It was just almost like almost a pre, almost a to look. But I had um High Five, I had Bebo, I had MSN it was just so mad. So, I, I think for if I'm if I think if I'm saying this correctly, you had to share your email to have MSN Messenger, didn't you? Was it M, was it yeah, email? yeah yeah it was email yeah, yeah. hotmail account I think. Yeah. Imagine how awkward is that? Because if someone asks me for my email now, it's strictly business. Yeah, why are you asking me for my email, bro? It's like, true. It's, I have a number, or even now I'll say it. Or here's my Insta. Mm. Even sometimes if it's for, for business, business opportunities, or something. Yeah. yeah. So um, them times. As basically kids in school, uh, um, what's your email? So I can MSN, so I can give you the MSN, mm. so we can talk on MSN kind of thing. But um, yeah, it's it, it was interesting because I still remember um, the first ever thing I because I had broadband. The thing was slow as hell. It was <laughs> proper slow. And I remember the first time at my auntie's house when we got um, broadband, actually, it was dial up. Yeah. It made that weird noise. Mm -hmm. And weirdly enough the first video i ever watched was um usher <laughs> caught up <laughs> you know how long it took the video to um to um, load up it was like 45 minutes no way and the video is what four minutes three minutes and a half <laughs> four, and i sat there patiently waiting 45 minutes didn't even have a snack that's a terrible return imagine investment. <laughs> and then obviously after that exactly <laughs> after that obviously you got into the msns and all the rest of it and i couldn't wait so i'm seeing these people for what six hours of my day Mm. then running like sprinting home skidding not even taking off my uniform sweating to get on msn start talking come on man mm. give them space as my mom would say give them but my mom didn't even know i was using msn you know she didn't she didn't understand about um safeguarding kids from internet obviously mm -hmm. she didn't even know how to use the internet even now she's still a bit she struggles a little bit with the internet yeah but she's way better now but she doesn't know she didn't know at the time, and obviously, I just me and my brother just pulled the wool over our eyes. Like, oh, my mom, there's nothing to worry about. It's just, just MSN, and I'm just talking to my friend. Mm. Sometimes these people you don't even know, the random people that are speaking to yeah. you, and you think, how do they get my email and all the rest of it? But and that's that's how it would have worked, right? Someone would have had to have given someone else your email, yeah, and then they would add that. your email, yeah, and then you can accept the friend, right? Yeah. Or did I they just automatically become your I don't know. friends it's if they like, add you? It's not like house party where you can jump into a room with your friends. I don't think it was like that, where you could jump into a room with your friends no, no, and no, no, no. add someone they else just, in the room. They would, I think they could just add you for getting your information from yeah, someone Yeah, like they else, have to maybe. put it in somewhere. They add you. But I'm trying to remember, did we have to accept I someone's... Think, yeah, I think you had to accept it. You probably accepted think, to see who it was. Yeah. Maybe. And, and then, then you'd have, and then you on a, you'd have like your contact list. You'd click one, it'll take you into like a chat room. Yeah. And then you chat. Or, and start, then later on, it was like video chat as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, start yeah. talking to that babes from school that you... <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> how you started training game. You've been, waiting, <laughs> you've been right, waiting to speak to since since three o'clock when the yeah, bell literally. went. It's, it's mad, yeah, man. Know, man. But yeah, I had a Bebo as well. That was hilarious. Those are the first times where where you, you could share loves. Was mm. it loves? And there's some people, hundreds of loves. And I think oh, I had like yeah. five. And I was proper jealous. I was like, why is everyone, what's going on? Am I not paying? Do you know what's, what I used to think? That's really mad, you know? Well. It's never really dawned on me that, like, one, some of the things that we kind of, like, focus on now in terms of, like, how people are addicted to social media mm. and how people are like, genuinely affected by the, by the, the kind of popularity 
aspect of of social media like in particular like something like Instagram where you kind of like really focus on how many likes you get how many views mm. you get it didn't really dawn on me that we were probably doing that even from the days of Bebo MySpace because I actually yeah. remember that although I don't remember using the, the site for that long yeah. I actually remember seeing certain people have more yeah. loves or whatever it is I'm thinking like right like what points. do I need to do to like yeah to get get to that point like how can I also be as popular as them and you know you start taking stupid photos with your hat backwards or whatever <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you was doing with your Averix jacket back in the day. <laughs> or <laughs> burn, your, yeah, burn your uncle's one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just to try and get a cool picture. So it's just funny oh, how things man. haven't really changed. But that was the very beginning of like the West internet West. era for us. Yeah, man. Do you remember um, BB Pin as well? Yes. Oh, man. I never had one. So I got one for my girlfriend at the time and my younger, bro- um, my younger brother. And I just, I thought I can't be part of this where I succumb to being like everyone else and just being addicted to my phone. Mm. I did. That's why I didn't get one. Okay. But then in the end, I thought, oh, come on, man. You have to get the WhatsApps. You have to get the, you know, the contact numbers. You have to get the rest of it. Mm. I still didn't get BB Pin though. Even when it came on iPhone, I think it was an app on iPhone at one point. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Until um, I still didn't that, get was, it. that was the beginning of the end of BlackBerry. Really? Because really? that, was, that was the main thing a lot of people were going there for, for that yeah, private messaging exclusive. service. Yeah. Yeah. And then once WhatsApp and even instant messages on iPhone mm. became just blew up, and then yeah, BB but pin. literally once BB BB came on um, um, iPhone, disappeared completely disappeared redundant. Completely, yeah, but I remember everyone was a. I remember ev- I think ninety nine percent of the um, population. I was part of the one percent that didn't have an iPhone, um, a BlackBerry mm. BB pin. I had a BB. I remember that. Did you? Did you? I think. I, I think. Yeah. So for me, I think for me, um, I'm thinking about like the differences in our in our cohorts mm. i think the main difference for me is msn became mobile for us i think that was like growing up i really like looking back now i think that was the big pivotal like big before you had to be in a certain location next to the the big computer with the back off <laughs> 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 to chat to these people and engage in it mm, yeah. so it's and when your parents say go to bed you leave it there yeah and if you're not at home you leave it there yeah your Whereas status in, would be away yeah or as it became a thing where be- even before mm. Blackberries, even when the Sony Ericsson's were getting better and things like that, and s- the sliding phones would come on, were coming up, um, you could then do MS- have MSN on your phone. Mm. And for us, that was like, okay, it, it changed the game because now you're messaging people in class. Yeah, You're doing things like that. And then when Blackberries came in, came in, that was it. I think that was the beginning of people being, that was the first time I actually realized it's possible to be addicted to your phone. I was. And I, w- I probably wouldn't have got over it if I didn't get in trouble in school and my mum confiscated my phone. And then I realised, wow, like, I really want my phone. Like, I re- I didn't have yeah. I didn't mm. have a phone that was this good before and I was okay. But I really want my phone back. Like, I want to, I felt it physically. And then I also felt getting to the point where I was just like, I didn't really care anymore. I'd gotten over the FOMO of everyone else having their phone. And then when I got it back, I didn't use it for like a month after getting it back I was like okay cool I'm over it but that was the first time I realised I'm attached to this thing now mm. where I feel like for a lot of other people they weren't maybe they weren't fortunate to have that realisation in like year nine Yeah. so for them it might have yeah persisted but that's when I, I think that's like the pivotal moment where because it's all communication but then you kind of you would have bent your day towards those communication points mm. but that still meant that most of your day could have been without it yeah. Whereas nowadays your whole day has it, so you're, it doesn't even feel like you're bending your day towards it anymore. Mm. It just feel it feels like a constant. Like you wouldn't leave your house without your phone mm. you, now. <laughs> Whereas before you could, and you could still get about. There are a few numbers you remember. There are a few people that know ref- roughly what your day is going to be like. You would get on with your day. Whereas now it's almost on it. Everything, yeah, whether you way. drive, whether you need to buy something, whether you need to go on the bus. You need it. If you have notes for something, you have paperwork saved, it's like, it's, it's ubiquitous to life now almost. Yeah, that's crazy. I th- even even when I think about like phones and stuff, I don't think I had a phone until the age of 11, 12. What was your first phone? It was like a Nokia 3210 or something. The green one? Yes, like that kind of like turquoise kind of. Oh yeah. That was, yeah, that, that kind of. There. There's still, it's still got one bar of battery, by the way. I'm really, sure that's still got one bar of battery. <laughs> that to me, those were the those were the days of like the strong <laughs> phones as well. Like the proper, like I could smash this phone on your head right yeah. now, your head's gonna be damaged, but my phone's gonna be completely fine. Scratch. Throw it on the floor, 
it's going to be it'll bounce proper, back into proper good. <laughs> there was one in particular, it was a Nokia phone that you could slide up. What was that? Ooh, the red Fixed on the phone. side. I think so, like a kind of burgundy like, yeah. type. That was a decent but it's way. just funny because like phones for me in school weren't <clears> like, it wasn't like a, it's not even that it wasn't a priority. My parents were just very clear, like you don't need a phone. And 100%. my life kind of operated in a way where a phone wasn't necessary. necessary so yeah. if I wanted to go out, for instance, after school, it was more a matter of, yo, you're going to be at home later on. Yeah, you need to come over like 4.35 o'clock. That's when my mom's going to be home. And I'm just going to walk over to your house. And that's that's that. There was no kind communication, of... Communication, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, the thing, communication was literally just us talking about, you're going to be at home? Yeah, I'm going to be at home. Cool. I think oh, one thing that's gone is people don't have to be as trustworthy anymore. Yeah. <laughs> now that, like, Bro. if I see you at four o'clock, you have to be there at eight. <laughs> like, yeah. You have to be yeah. there. There is, I can't... If I get there and you're not there... I just have to be sad and go home. Yeah. yeah. That's Literally. a fantastic point <laughs> That's as well. That's a fantastic it's true, point. <laughs> That's a fantastic point. Be sad point. and go home, boy. But the thing is, we'll rarely let down. Tr- yeah. yeah. Because why people is had that? to be. You had to be. Because, because they, you, you knew, knew. <laughs> the ends was waiting for you, Mike, to be there at four o'clock. If you're not there at four o'clock and everyone leaves because you're not there. It's peak. Don't even talk to us. Even though you can't call us anyway and tell us uh, and, and for us to cut you down the phone, yeah. we're still going to be upset with you because when we see you next time, it's going to be like, man, man, yeah. you let the whole crew down. We need you to do there, whether it's for football, whether it's for arcade, whether it's mm. for cinema. Come on, man. It's true. And them times you couldn't even call your boy and say, oh, yeah. it's because mom, yeah. mom's being a bit, you know what, I didn't wash the plates. Yeah, so it's like, true. Mom's not leaving the house. And that's really, that's kind of what it is in <laughs> terms of being able to trust people. I think it's knowing that actually I could take the, I could take, Take the make a little bit because if I'm going to be 10, 15, 20 minutes yeah. late, I can always just message and just kind of blag or whatever. Whereas Coming those heavy. times, you know for a fact that if I'm not there for four o'clock, that person is going to leave the park or, you know, they're not going to be waiting for me at the cinema. Yeah. So I need to be there. And I think that you'll break your back to get there. Yeah. Fact. You had no choice but to do that. And it's funny. I don't think, did you guys used to like um use your house phones to ring? That's what I used to do as well. Like, Rarely, but yeah. Like not often, but I would yeah. use the house phone and even that. Yeah. It's weird how house phones have just really become redundant. They're just in the there home. for the broadband. Because when, when mobile phones came out and they became something that we were using like, as like, you know, our, our, our go-to kind of gadget, house phone, it became so redundant that there would be days where it would just be ringing, ringing, ringing. And I didn't even have to hear my mum say, oh, leave the phone alone. Everybody just knew leave the phone alone, like let it ring out yeah. to the point where there was just no need for a house phone full yeah. stop. But if I did need to get through to someone, I would say, oh, by the way, you know, is, is Jermaine home today? And they would say, yeah, Jermaine's at home. Cool, sweet, lock off. But there wasn't that reliance on me having to message him or or kind of like WhatsApp him or anything. And I think it's just interesting how he was a lot more free. Yeah. In school, free of yeah. that kind of, I say it's a burden. I actually think phones are a burden. Yeah, they are. We've become That's kind of what I was getting we've at. We've become really lazy as well. Do you remember when you could remember 20 numbers, like all 11 digits, 20 numbers, yes. and not get a digit wrong and yeah. still know what digits meant, what whose mm-hmm. number. So this, this means... Every obviously. important person in my life, I could remember those 11 digits and I'd have no problem. Remember now, easy. I don't, even, I don't even know my wife's number. I swear to you, the only number I know off by heart is my own number. Yeah, that's the thing. The only number I A know. lot of people don't know that. Imagine, I work in the, I work in the bank here. When you're asking customers for their own contact number, their man don't know it. Yeah. I don't call myself. I'm like, <laughs> I know you don't call yourself, but if we're going to give your number up, you need to have your own, you need to know your number. Innit? That's the bare minimum. <laughs> yeah, like, you know what I mean? The only number I know is literally my contact number and my mum's old number. I don't even know her new number. I don't know anyone else's number. You know? I don't it's so anything. bad. Yeah. Even the last four, I used to know, I used to, I've done this thing where I started um, remembering the last four digits of numbers. Even that's gone. Myth. So when people say to me, oh, is your number, I don't know, what, zero, seven, three, <laughs> I don't know where it is, yeah? I'll be like, I have no idea. Because you said it in such a way that I don't even know that's my own number. I have to say it in the rhythm, yeah? Mm. And you saying the last three digits doesn't sound like the last four digits that I know, even if it is. You just add an extra number and I'm yeah. completely thrown off. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely made us lazy. Yeah, 100%. Our memory's gone, like, but, in terms of numbers. But aside from laziness as well, it's obviously made us very antisocial. That's the yeah. other thing. That's what I disagree with. Yeah, I think, think it's, so? I think it's made, I think it's made, do you know why I say I think it's made us antisocial? I'm going to ask you after why you think right. it's the opposite. From a personal point of view, even the basics of someone just talking to you, when was the last time you spoke to someone or you watched a film with someone and they haven't checked their phone within that period of time? Like let's say for that hour oh, of a film 
or even just having a conversation. And the reason why I say that is like, I speak to my wife. I do it. You're doing it now. Look at yeah. <laughs> Look at it. He's playing with his phone yeah. now. Like my wife will be speaking to me, for example, and I'll be scrolling on my tweets, like scrolling mm. on my Twitter, sorry. And as I'm scrolling, I'm listening to what she's saying and then something about Arsenal will come up and immediately my attention is here. <laughs> You should get that look of guilt on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that even on loud? Look at him. We're literally talking about being distracted by your phone. This guy's watching videos. <laughs> That's so bad. But there you go. That was basically what I was going to allude to. Thank you for my TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, my gosh. That's but yeah, but yeah, literally, he literally just summed up what I was just about to say. We get distracted way too easily. And I think that's Easy. what makes us antisocial. Even in social settings, I think we don't, we don't. In the rave, even in social settings, where in the rave where we're holding up, we're not even caring about enjoying the moment. It's, it's about I want everyone else that's not here to, to know see. that I'm in a party, half enjoying myself, even if it's a dead yeah, rave. Because I've seen some of my friends and I cast them after. I'm like, bro, that rave looked dead, but you tried to make it look live. You're Why? the only one that was dancing. Why are you trying to make it look live? If it's dead, it's dead, and you don't need to record it. But it's just become a norm. It's become the norm now where everyone does a selfie with the hand up in the air, with the phone in their hand. Showing maybe two or three men, and there's always one drunk guy that's burping in your eye. Mm. <laughs> Which is another thing altogether, not enjoying the moment. But in terms of it being an antisocial or something that encourages antisocial behavior, I'm interested for Ade to kind of explain why he thinks that's not the case. Yeah, I actually want to hear this. I think, I don't think it's antisocial. The reason being is probably how I'm, how I'm measuring social interaction. And because of that, I think it's hyper social, and that's also a problem. Mm. So I'm not—I don't think it's like oh, like everything's fine or better. I think it's, it's a case of hyper social interaction, and that's why people are recording videos instead of inter- enjoying the moment because they are engaging in a social. They're going to share it with a with a society. Others, yeah. they're, they're like a microcosm of society. Yeah. It's still a social interaction. Mm. Fair. Like when you're on Twitter, most people aren't following nobody. Mm. They're following at least one or two people and interacting with those people in their microcosm of society. Mm. Mm. So it's still a social interaction. That's why I would say it's not that people aren't withdrawing from social interactions. <clears throat> they're becoming less personable because they're having less in-person social interactions. Mm. And that's why you might be talking to someone and they're on their phone because that's that's an impersonable thing. To, you, sh- you shouldn't do that mm. in the middle of a per- in, an in-person interaction. Like I just did. But you will. Because that's that's shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will because that's now the norm of social interaction. Now we do more social interaction online generally. Yeah, not everyone, yeah. but generally. So it would logically follow that you would prioritize that now. Yeah, so, I, f- I think yeah, I think that's yeah. a good way to correct it. You're right. Actually, it doesn't like make that. us antisocial. I've just learned a new word. It makes us hyper hyper social. <laughs> you need to make sure you copyright that word. Yeah. It makes us hyper. Is that a real thing? Is that a real word? I'm using the word hyper in because its normal, of, yeah. Yeah, in its yeah. normal trait. It's but a hyphen. It, it, probably a is a, it probably is a thing. Though. But it makes sense. You're right. Because when you think about the word antisocial, it's, 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 I would imagine the definition would be, you know, something along the lines of to not engage with yeah, people with or communicate with people when actually it's the opposite. When I'm talking to you or when you're talking to someone, what we're doing instead is we're communicating and engaging with other people who aren't with you on Twitter or on Instagram, as opposed to actually kind of embracing... Looking the moment life, yeah. that you're having now and I think that's why so that's why when I said it makes you antisocial I think it's more like in that very moment you're not being sociable with me you're being antisocial but it's because somewhere else you're being very hyper social yeah. you know you're... And I think that's a it's an interesting thing because it's one thing I've been thinking about in terms of how that changes it changes the habits that are necessary to survive in, in like if the dynamic of a social interaction is now changed from in person to more, mostly online, mm. the rules of engagement will also change. Yeah, and I, one thing I'm realizing is that people are are kind of drifting into like different realms now when it comes to like their expectations in social settings, their expectations of other people, and their, the reasons behind that. Um, yeah, I've just started to notice there's a lot of because people don't meet more in person they meet more online there's almost like and because of the 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 rules of engagement of online interactions there's like a personality that you have online Mm. and it's a summation of that little drip that Mm. you're that you're putting there here and there and Mm. that's what people have constructed and that's what they're talking to they're not really talking Mm. to you yeah Mm. so that creates like a dissociation between the real person that's talking 
and the person that is being presented and you kind of you're kind of aware of it yeah like if you what it's like there's an image you want to portray or there is a an conscious effort not to portray an image either way you don't do that in person yeah i got a I question tr- go on you so go i was go. just gonna say i try my hardest to be as or is the word i'm looking for organic try to be authentic. as original authentic all those words but that's my as point. possible that's my point yeah and still like in person when yeah. you're just having a conversation with someone is one of the, the thoughts in your mind oh, let, me, let me be authentic Probably not, nah. but online it is, and that already yeah. you're already behaving different. <laughs> Fair. In the grand scheme of things, then how do you, how how detrimental do you think that is? Looking at the bigger picture, if you've got, you know, what is what like seven point eight billion people in the world or something. If you've got like a lot of people, let's say I'm not even going to say a number. If you've got a lot of people around the world who are now giving everybody else a fragment of what they really are. Because we know now that social media is kind of like the the platform in which we show I say our we show our personality or something that is kind of like a makeup personality. How detrimental is that then to the world or to us, do you think? If if we're kind of focusing more focusing more on this social media presence, this social media personality, whether we know that we're doing it or not, there's clearly a lot more focus on what we look like and how we present on the internet. How detrimental do you think that is? Or is it detrimental at all? I think it's already happening in that the, the biggest detriment is that your online persona becomes more valuable than your real in-person like characteristics and who you are in person. It's already, I think it's already like, there are people who live in like terrible places, but they figured out how to take that good picture from that right angle. And they are making thousands a month um, promoting people on Instagram with a, because they have a large following. Mm. There was, I watched a catch uh, uh, episode of a TV show where the girl was pretending to be someone else, and the account that she was using to pretend was earning so much that she was sending someone hundreds of pounds a day. So the online, no one cares who she is in person. Mm. No one that's following her knows who she is in person. Well, she's it, that pretend- doesn't matter. So she was pretending to be somebody else, and that account was making money. That, that online persona that isn't a real person it's a picture of one person and the, the characteristics of another person so merged to catfish yeah that's it's it's and that's that was making money that was seen as valuable by the people that were following it people mm-hmm. were keeping up with it people wanted that account to promote them no one cared that it wasn't that person but I was gonna but, I, but so the question was how detrimental that is that within the answer that you've just given you've kind of actually highlighted the fact that actually people have become successful from their online personas because in this age that we're living in now the you know some of the most successful people that we come across on a regular basis are you know the youtubers the influencers they've used this you know they've used this new tool that's come out in the last like what 10 15 20 years Mm. to kind of like build businesses kind of like build stuff for themselves but a lot of the time especially you know according to what you was just saying now a lot of the time they have given us a fake personality or a personality that's not necessarily authentic it's more of their online image but that online image has now clearly become more important than whatever their authentic self is so it's made a lot of people money it's made them a lot of success does that then not kind of encourage more people more younger people to focus more on what they look like what their best picture looks like what their angle looks like what content they're putting out as opposed to them focusing on what their authentic self is i don't know i'm just i think i think in terms of it being a detriment or being detrimental to should we say society i think a lot of people have become empty vessels. So they're making these profiles. Mm. Yeah, you're very successful from it. You're making a lot of money or is is making you feel like you can express yourself in, in a certain way. But you're having this false sense of, um, almost a false, false sense of reality, I would say. Mm. But when you take that, when you switch it off now, some people can't remember, some people can't switch off from the internet or from social media. So now when you do have to get away from it, you're be- you become this empty person because you put so much of your your almost your life and your fake self into that thing mm. which is basically a phone and social media once the phone dies i've seen some people go into a like actual panic attacks 
like genuine, I've got 1%. You ever seen when people get to the 1%? Yeah, yeah. Trust the me. The 1% people. And they start they're close like they're to home for me. Literally. It's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> and I think I get it. I've always tried to wean myself. So I have times where I used to be almost like spokesperson. Uh, you know what? I, I, I'm not addicted to my phone. Mm. But at times you do feel like, oh, I just want that extra. You know what I mean? I just want to do something extra on my phone. Mm. So I have times where I have um, time away from my phone. I'll give myself a week from, away from social media. I'll delete the apps. Mm. Or I'll just make sure I make a conscious effort to not touch any of the apps like um, Instagram and all the rest of it. But at the same time, man, I think it's it's become this thing where people are really putting their whole like blood, sweat, and tears and their whole soul into social media. And now, when you come, when it comes to interacting with people, real people, now you forgot how to make eye contact, you forgot how to shake, you forgot how to greet people, or even have, hold a conversation. Mm. That's why a lot of people that genuinely, let's say, meet me for the first time or have met me a few times, they're like, oh, like it's refreshing to meet someone that genuinely talks. Mm. I'm like, what? Who do you what? Who do you meet that you that doesn't talk to you? They're like, you'd be surprised. A lot of people nowadays forget how to com- hold a conversation or forget how to express themselves or articulate themselves in a certain way yeah. or just forget how to be human beings. And I, I find that kind of weird and scary, but it's it is reality. Mm. I feel like people pump way too much into social media. Yeah, I'm one of them. By yeah. the way. <laughs> <laughs> you, th- you think that you pump too much into social media? And nowadays, I. I want people to see what I'm doing. Mm. Even today, <laughs> you see, I put timestamps and locations of where, why does everyone need to know that? Mm. How do you, how do I know that everyone wants to know where, where, but at the same time, I try to almost, maybe let's say, convince myself that if I do certain things and show certain people certain things, they can do it as well. Mm. Because I haven't, I've come from uh, literally like humble, very humble beginnings. Like mm. nothing was ever, even now, it's not easy. Life is not easy. But I know there's people out there. And I, I basically, I used to look at the internet and look at social media and think, I wish someone like me or mm. someone that represents someone like me was on the internet. You know what I mean? Mm. But there was never someone like that. So I wanted someone, I, I just wanted to be this guy. So maybe almost like a character. Mm. I want to be this guy that is personable. People can understand him. People can relate to him. And he still enjoys himself. Mm. And he doesn't, he doesn't splash millions because he doesn't have millions, but he still enjoys his life. He still enjoy, enjoys, he try, I'm trying to almost include the way I am in real life on the internet, if that makes sense. The way I am with my son is genuinely how I am with my son. The way I make bands with my mum and even take the make out of my mum sometimes is how I am in real life. Mm. So I know a lot of people don't do things because the internet won't approve of that, but I do things because that's what I want to do and that's what I do in real life. But again, that's still an element of me just... Taking the onus and... And putting too much into the internet, if that makes sense. Mm. But yeah. I, think, I think what's key, though, with what you said, though, is that you're conscious. Yeah, like I try you, to be. You, you're conscious of the fact that actually I'm putting a lot into this, but this is the reason why. Whether it's right or wrong, yeah. or whether it's... Um, whether it's justified or not, you know, whether there's any kind of, like positive outcome from the end of it it's different but I think what's important is that you're saying I know why I'm doing it I'm not just doing this because I'm a zombie now and I'm just plugged into my phone and I'm not aware of what I'm doing and I think that's probably where I have my biggest concern that so as a teacher I'm teaching young people who have been born into a (sighs) into a society that is just completely obsessed with social media as in from the minute that they're born social media in some way or form impacts their life whether it's because their parents who maybe might be similar age to myself have the camera in their face from the minute they've come out of the womb just like hey like welcome to the world everyone see my baby here yeah you get it there's it's (laughs) unavoidable for them and so when they get to the point where they themselves have access to you know the internet and to gadgets that have access to the internet which is very young by the way as in like two-year-olds now can operate a phone or an ipad better than i can yeah my son was doing that. What I'm seeing now as a teacher is young people who are incredibly ad- like addicted. If I could look up the definition for addiction, I'm sure it definitely kind of, it defines what I see in my classroom a lot. As in, if you take away the iPad from a child, he is having the biggest meltdown, yeah. biggest meltdown. Some of the issues that he's having, that's you know the reason why he hates home. And the reason why he hates his mum is because his mum told him he had to get off the PlayStation at 10 o'clock at night. 
And you're like, bro, like I didn't nice. even have the PlayStation at that time. Like, um, you know, I was suffering with Dreamcast and even then there was kind of boundaries that were set around the weekend. So like their whole life already is just kind of like immersed in the internet, social media. Like, and I think my biggest concern is one, there's the safeguarding aspect of it in that they themselves don't understand what safeguarding is and it's not really their responsibility it's the responsibility of their parents but then their parents some of them are quite a bit older than us and some of them are around our age they haven't necessarily been educated i don't think to safeguard their children on the internet so i'm coming up with a lot i'm seeing a lot of cases where you know a child will come in and we're having breakfast and he'll talk about this person that he's speaking to on his game and by the end of that conversation you're like i think you might be speaking to some old guy and the children, some of the children are like kind of shrewd enough to be like, yo, like, but where did he add you from? And like, are you sure that's really, you know, who you think you're talking to? And this this child will be like, no, 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 that's my friend. That's my friend. I've had them for two or three weeks. Like, yeah. And then, you know, before you know it, I'm having to write safeguarding forms, but it's happening so often that I think that's such a, it just reminds me of such a big difference from how we were like, not how we were raised, but like what we were born into, we were kind of born into it and we kind of like had the slow progression of the internet and, you know, it wasn't so much in our faces. We could use it, we might not use it. If you had access to a phone, it's more so because your mum or dad wanted to give you a phone or because they could afford it, whatever. Where it's now, it's almost like it's a given. Yeah. You're going to have some access to an iPad, to a Mac, some to a phone, screen, yeah. to some kind of screen and pe parents use it as a way to kind of um, distract their child. But then I've seen, them. I've also seen parents themselves completely like neglect their child because they're just so immersed on whatever they're doing on their phone to the point where they're walking with their child outside of the school and they're like almost walking into cars that are driving into the gates because they've got phones in their hands and I don't know who they're messaging or texting, but it's clearly more important than looking out. Well, your child safety. Yeah. So it's just like in many different ways, I've seen how it's kind of like really negatively impacted, um, not just the younger generation, but also like our generation and. Although I see the positives with it, I think the f one thing that's missing is like education around how we can, one, safeguard the young people. Um, but then I think also, too, how we can kind of like do what you're doing in that sense and be conscious of like why we use it, how we use it, and also have a tool or have strategies to kind of like help yourself not kind of get bogged down in the negative things that come with social media. Um but I've got a feeling the way Ade is looking at me, <laughs> he's like, nah, man, the internet is the best thing that's ever happened to us. It's not. It's, it, so basically a few things that, that I just wanted to point out from what you're saying. Um, first of all, we're now in a realm where children are going to start to interact with and learn about the world through screens. Mm. That's how they're going to learn about it. It's not books anymore. And it's not through conversations with parents. It's good. They're going to learn everything from their ABCs to colors, to how to code, to how to, it's all going to be screens. So when for us, online gaming might not have been the biggest thing. So the, the element of community wasn't as much, but for them, they now, they like, it's not a screen. Like it's a portal of association. Mm. It's now associated with the community that they're connected to. So when it's now taken away, you're not taking away a game. You're taking away all my friends. You're taking away mm -hmm. this. You're taking away what would have been a youth club. Mm. It, it would be as painful as if you were going to, to the local youth club. You have all your friends there. You go there regularly. That's where a, there's a PlayStation or there's like table tennis or whatever. And now suddenly your mom's like, you're not going. You're like, that's going to hurt you. Mm. That's It's a mixture of that plus the feeling of like, they're still human. So they're still going to feel a possessive kind of connection to their devices as well that multiplies that whole pain of I've been, I've been cut off. I'm an island. I'm by myself in this room. Um, so I think there's that element to not to cancel out what you were saying, but to also just remember mm. like it's a, and places like Twitter are, it's a place. Like it's not a device. It's not an app anymore. Mm. That's where you go That's to meet your friends now. Mm. Or even, even, even business or work opportunities yeah, exactly. like uh, yeah like so it's it's now and i think the interesting thing about all these things is like oh the human it, the human brain is not it wasn't designed to deal with that it wasn't designed to yeah. deal with the consequences of i don't have that many followers but if i tweet something my brain isn't designed to deal with 2000 odd other opinions challenging me mm. or, or being able to 
Mm. It's not designed for that. Mm. It's going to be overwhelmed. It's not designed for the types of consequences that come from, I can have a conversation with my friend and, and slip up and he can correct me. And it's, uh, my human brain is designed for that. Mm. It can be done in a community. It can be done in a village. It can be done in a household. When it's done on stage almost, mm. it's not designed to deal with that much scrutiny that's that intense all at once through mm. a medium that you feel so connected. Like, so now the, the negatives are coming from the same place that you associate your community with and your brain isn't designed to deal with that type of complexity coming from that. It's not meant to be all clumped up like that. Mm. And that's another thing that we forget. Like, these are not the natural ways that humans communicate. So even though like there's, there's benefits and stuff, but, and even though there, there are caveats to remember, like these are places now, these are connections and all those things. It's also, I really, it's one thing I, cause I, I hate phones. I've, I've said it in like a, in a past podcast as well. I don't like using phones to communicate. I want to communicate with you in person. If I'm on Twitter, that's, that's verbal diarrhea for me. If you chime in, you chime in. Cool. We can have a, a small exchange. But if we if there's a conversation to have, let's book a time in. What's your schedule like? What's the next fourteen days like for you? Do this. Let's in, let's sit down in person though. Yeah, as in, in I, we're gonna be in person. Mm. In this quarantine time, it's been harder because I just haven't seen people. I've tried to do some video stuff instead, mm. but I'm I'm not for a textual conversation or phone calls. I it's gonna be in person. I value Same. I mm. value that interaction so much. And I think the reason is because, and for, for the two of you as well, I still have memories of what life was like Without before it. all this stuff. Yeah. And yeah, I, just, so. I just prefer that. Yeah, yeah. And it because is, we know what it's like to actually it have... It's for me. I, I, I do prefer that as well. I would definitely agree. Um, people do... I, I, I can't... I feel like I can't... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I can't articulate myself sometimes that well through text or it just becomes long. mm there's certain things that I want to say and I start losing my train of thought because I can't type fast as fast as my brain is thinking. Mm. If I if I speak it now, I can definitely do that. And if I do that in person, it's even better. Video is not that bad, but I still want to feel that interaction with you. I want to see your face. I want to see your body language. I want to see you mm. for who you are, if that makes sense. So I definitely agree with that. I don't, um, I wouldn't say I hate phones. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I hate them. But, oh my God. But, I, I I get it. I understand the idea behind it in, in what you're saying. I was gonna say maybe a uh, 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 subject still on, on still a similar topic. What age do you think? So if you had a child now, do you think it's the right thing to get your child involved in screens or social media, or do you think it's just that's you, that's a no go? You don't do that until your your teenager, for example. I think at least until you're seven. Like the the a large part of your brain forms at, by that point. That's that would be my reasoning, mm. just to allow the brain to develop in in a more natural kind of space. Mm. And also because up, I don't I can't and this is someone who's not a parent up until the age of seven I can't imagine you ha like I can't Im to. yeah I can't imagine your life would your quality of life would be drastically lower yeah. if you weren't surrounded by screens. That would be the but also the brain development thing as well. This, I was gonna say this is where I had some sort of rift between me and my son's mom because um I, I again I was gonna seem like the the grumpy parent because I was like he doesn't need a tablet and he doesn't need a switch. I never got any of those when I was what when I was seven, I think I just about got trainers, right? <laughs> After before that I think I was barefoot everywhere. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Fresh boy. The guy's got the guy's literally got a tablet. He's got and he sometimes he's playing them both at the same time. And I'm like, how do you, first of all, how do you, how you, a six-year-old, how are you even doing that? Mm. And then he start, he starts doing that thing. Well, I'll tell him to calm down now. You have to, there's times where you can't be on it because mm. you're panicking when you can't find a charger. Mm. So you need to go back to playing with your action man and all your other toys, like your Spider-Man. Mm. So it's, it's hard because one of the reasons I've heard from a lot of parents and even people that don't have children, just you don't want them to miss out. Miss out on what though? Because... We, I know it's a different time, different era, but we also, we had our things, but everything was very um, safeguarded. Everything was, you can't do this. I feel like children nowadays, just mm. uh, if you're not going to give me that, then we're just going to have a fight then. Mm. Fight, you're going to fight me. Impossible. 
Mm. Like my son, if I when at one point when he took his um tablet off of him, the guy will have a tantrum. He never has a tantrum in front of me, but one time I think he forgot. <laughs> he came from his mum, I picked him up. I took his iPad off him because it's late. Like it's like eight o'clock, bro. You're meant to be sleeping. I know it's the weekend, but it's still late for you. The guy rolled on the floor, and I looked at him. I was like, "Me, <laughs> me, you're rolling on the floor for me, with, with, because of tablet." I called his mum straight away and said, this guy's not touching the tablet for at least two weeks. There's no way he's rolling, doing rolls. I can hear his limbs hitting the floor. <laughs> Impossible. I'll smash it. I, it was me and your mum that bought this, bought these things for you. I'll smash it. I don't mind losing money like that. There's no way. It can't be at your age. You're not even, like you're saying, you're not even seven yet. And you're addicted to it that much. Nah, it can't be a thing. I don't care if you're missing out anymore. I, I don't want you to miss out. But at the same time, I don't think it's that that detrimental to their development mm. for them not being involved in social media or using a screen. At some point. The yeah. guy was two when he was using my iPad. <laughs> I think it was one and a half or even one. The guy was, he knew when to swipe, when FaceTimes were coming through and messages were coming through. He'd just be looking at um, YouTube and he'd just get his little finger and swipe up. Yeah. I've How seen, do you know that? I've seen and if he knew something, as well. it's mad. But that's and like, I think... It's the brain development. I've yeah. Seen, mm. That's one thing... Um, I really, really with with social media. That's the the my biggest worry, is that we we are talking about like the social implications and stuff. But and it's just because people just don't know about how it's affecting their brains. But the brain development stuff, I think, is the is the most detrimental part. And we don't. And even us as adults, we are suffering from the effects of yeah. social media. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. We are lucky that we have like snippets of what life was like before. So, for example, we were able to build up our ideas about community and we were able to practice real life interactions and it was central and it was yeah. necessary. It had importance. Whereas now you can be the most awkward child as long as you've got 2,000 friends online, yeah. you've got 500 people you play COD with. It's, you don't get to ch- confront that and challenge it and grow. You don't have to. Yeah. And that's stif- like for me... That's one of yeah. That's one of the pe- children will learn how to do things with practice. So yeah. if what they're interacting with is the screen, that's what they're practiced in. Yeah, yeah. and they don't, they don't even do runouts. Kids mm. don't do runouts nowadays, bro. No, no, no. They don't play he. They don't play knock down whoever or not the neighbor's door. Cause yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah. don't do none of that. Yeah, I know. I know. It's like quite quite different times, and you know, COVID's had a massive part to play in this, but. Mm, yeah. Even before, you know, the pandemic that we're going through now, I would ask like my students in the classroom, like, what have you guys done over the weekend? And like, I've got eight students in my class maximum. Seven out of eight of them would be like, oh yeah, didn't do much. Just played on my PlayStation all weekend. And don't get me wrong. You know how you're saying that that is now their portal. That's where they communicate with each other, with other people. That's like the equivalent to us playing out and whatever, but it's not playing out. There's something... There was something beautiful in, you know, your boy knocking on your door and your mum saying, no, you can't go out. <laughs> but that's the story. No, or tell, telling him in school, you have to knock and ask. Yeah. Oh, she's going to say, yeah. no, I can't ask. I can't. But equally, there was something beautiful about your boy knocking for you and you were going out and you were going on bike rides. The buzz. Like, yeah, you know, you're going to yeah. the park to play football for hours. like, And so, yeah, I think to round up, I think what's key is that we appreciate that social media and the internet clearly has its benefits it's clearly the world that we're operating in now and it's most definitely going to be what our children and their children are going to be using as their form of communication form to maybe even become wealthy to even do their jobs or even to even be educated they're going they're going to be using that i think what we have to do i think is um kind of educate them in terms of like how to manage it because like you said our brains definitely our brains, you know, it, it it doesn't have, it might have the capacity, but it's not trained to kind of deal with, Certain things. you know, being bullied online or being able to manage having 50 retweets and people are agreeing with you, people are criticizing you, people are bullying you, all of these things where we weren't prepared for, we're still not prepared for, but we know what life was like without the internet. Your child now that's born in 2020 will have no idea what it's like to not have the internet to not have people judging you based on that picture to not have your friends judging you on how many likes of friends that you've got at school that for them is their world but it doesn't necessarily make it right but it's also not a terrible thing either and i think it's about us kind of just like um 
adjusting to that, but also managing that and managing it as in really being intentional with like, how do we make sure this doesn't become our only personality? How do we make sure that we do know how to communicate with people outside of this? How do we make sure that we're able to speak to our friends on the phone, in person, as well as be able to communicate through WhatsApp yeah. or, or in your DMs? I think it's having more of a wholesome approach. So yeah, um, go on, Ad. Yeah, just, uh, I just wanted to say, one thing I'll say is I would say, put a priority on doing things in person. Mm. I think that's one thing that would just really help. Not, it might be hard to say, cut off all the online stuff yeah if you're if you're doing it and it might be necessary fine but put a priority in doing things in person mm. go sit and have a coffee with someone in person or have a good time with someone and go watch that movie even if you're not talking to each other but experience those positive feelings mm. in person as well mm -hmm. so it doesn't just feel like you're just getting it online yeah yeah and similarly be intentional with your children you know, there's a play dates. I don't know if that's a thing anymore, but relying on your child to just go into their room and play on the PlayStation or Xbox because they're happy and they're occupied. That there's there's something they might get from that. But what else could they be getting from you? Maybe driving over to a friend's house or to your sister's house and letting them play with their cousins, yeah. taking them out to the park. It's those little things that I think we're losing little by little, but it will become a bigger deal, a bigger situation, I think, in the next 10, 20 years when we see more suicide rates, when we see more antisocial children actually antisocial children though not <laughs> not, not children that are yeah hyper but actually antisocial don't know how to communicate but yeah anyway it's i think it's been a, a very good discussion i think there's a lot of things we got into and we, again you know something else i think we can explore in more detail in the future but thank you anyway for listening listening to today's episode we have had again mike we've had myself manny we've also had ade here with you um i hope you've taken away uh some key points some gems and uh, yeah, again, if you are interested in uh, using some of our products on the Goodman Factory website, again, please use the Jeep, Jeep use the discount code. Ugh, I'm stumbling over my words today. What's happening? Baby brain, baby brain. Please use the G-Pod 1 uh, discount code on all of our products to be able to get a discount. I said that beautifully. I'm happy with myself. But yeah, baby guys, go, by the way. have a good evening or a good morning if you're listening to this. And we shall see you soon on the next Goodman Factory podcast episode take care Check bye it out.